Hello, third graders. Welcome to our lesson today on classifying invertebrates. So we have now talked about the classification of animals and how we group them, and that we talk about if they are warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Now remember, warm-blooded means they can keep a constant temperature like you and I, and cold-blooded means that their temperature changes based on the outside environment. We also talked about animals that are vertebrae, meaning they have a backbone, or if invertebrate, meaning they don't have a backbone. So today we're gonna talk about different types of invertebrate animals. So grab your reading packet and you're gonna follow along with this lesson today. You're actually going to turn kind of far back into your packet. It's on, um, if you look at the bottom, it says page 65 and at the top it's gonna say, classifying invertebrate, just like this says here. So you'll wanna grab your reading packet on animals and turn to that section, it's the second to last page, called classifying invertebrate. So here are some examples of invertebrate animals or animals that do not have a backbone. There's insects, butterflies, worms, and jellyfish. And today we're gonna to talk about, well, how do they stay alive and not be big blobs on the ground if they don't have a backbone? So following along with me, let's talk a little bit about this. When you think about animals, vertebrates probably come to mind first. We did talk about this yesterday. But vertebrates make up only a small part of the world's animals. Most of the animals on Earth are invertebrates. Invertebrates means that they do not have backbones. They come in a huge range of shapes and sizes. Tiny, tiny mites are so small that they can only be seen with a microscope. While the largest invertebrate ever recorded was a giant squid that was 43 feet long. Oh my gosh, can you imagine swimming and coming across a 43 foot long squid, that's crazy. Insects, spiders, worms, jellyfish, and coral, yes, coral, are all types of invertebrates. So just remember that that in prefix, I-N, means not, so no backbone. If you remember, we talked about that invertebrates make up 95% of all the animals on earth. That's almost 100%. 100 is the most you can go. So we, only, we often think of these fish and reptiles, birds and amphibians because they're larger animals. But remember, invertebrates, think of their teeny tiny and how many little ants are in an ant pile compared to humans and compared to an other animals. The first group of invertebrates that we're gonna talk about are called arthropods, arthropods. Most invertebrates belong to a group called an arthropod. So this is the biggest group of invertebrates. An arthropod is an animal with jointed legs and a hard covering around the outside of their body. Jointed legs means that they have sections that are coming together. If you think about your knee, your knee is a joint. It connects the lower part of your leg to the upper part of your leg. So you have one jointed part on each of your legs. Like a suit of armor, the exoskeletons, which is the hard covering on the outside, protect the soft body parts inside. So exo means outside, like exiting. So the exoskeleton would be the skeleton on the outside. And it helps to protect the inside of their body. There are four types of invertebrate, of arthropods. And we're gonna look at some of those in a little bit. So here is a good picture of that exoskeleton. You can see on this pill bug here how the outside is this protective armor 
that is keeping this animal from being a flat blob on the ground. It is the skeleton on the outside. Here is a good picture of jointed legs. So this is a spider. And you can see right here, these parts between are joints. And you can see that there's different sections to the spider's legs. And they're even color coded here so that you can easily see them. Those two components, jointed legs and an exoskeleton, make the animal's arthropods. All right, here is one group of animals called the insects. These are arthropods. Remember, there's four groups. This group is the insects. And you can see some of those jointed legs here on some of these animals. And then their exterior skeleton or exoskeleton. So let's talk about insects. Insects are the largest group of arthropods. So remember, there's four groups. In fact, most of the animals on Earth are insects. Insects live everywhere on Earth except in the oceans. They are the biggest group. They live all over except for the oceans. Flies, grasshoppers, ants, butterflies, wasps, and beetles are all insects. Okay, so three-fourths, that's 75%, or if you think of a dollar, think of three parts of the dollar or three-quarters of the four, of all the animals on Earth are these insects. That's kind of crazy to think about. All adult insects have six legs and three parts to their body. That's what makes it an insect. They have six legs, which means it's called a hexapod because hexa means six. And they have three parts to their leg or three parts to their bodies. We're going to talk about it. The parts are called the head, which contains the brain, the eyes, and the mouth, just like your head. They also have those two antenna on their heads. Those are those things that stick out the top. The antenna are used to smell and to touch. So you and I have hands that we use to touch and our nose to smell, but an insect uses the antenna on the top of their head. The insect's legs are connected to the thorax. The thorax is the middle part of the body. So we have the head, and then the thorax. The thorax also contains the insect's heart. So that's where their heart is. If the insect can fly, it has wings attached to the thorax. Wings allow insects to move quickly from place to place. So the insects have a head and a thorax. And then the last part of the insect's body is called the abdomen. The abdomen holds the rest of the insect's organs. The abdomen is also where insects breathe. Insects do not have lungs. They do not have lungs. Instead, insects breathe in ox oxygen through spiracles, which are small holes in their exoskeleton. So they don't have lungs like you and I. They have little teeny holes in their exoskeleton that helps them to breathe. So here is a picture of the parts of an insect. We have the head with the eyes and the mouth. And you can see here are the antenna coming out from the head that help it to feel and to smell. In the middle here is the thorax that holds its heart, and those legs are attached all to the thorax, and then all the other organs and the breathing component are down here on the abdomen. So an insect has six legs and three body parts. You can kind of think of the song Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes and say, head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, that'll help you. 
Now, all vertebrae and all animals go through what's called metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. That means that insects change forms once or twice before becoming adults. So insects are going to change during the process of metamorphosis to change. So they're born as eggs, and then insects turn into a larva, which is like a smaller version. And then usually that larva forms some sort of a pupa or a chrysalis and changes into an adult. That's specifically this ladybug. But all insects, or most, sorry, not all, most, will actually go through this. It doesn't mean that they completely change like this one, but they change their forms at least once, maybe twice, before becoming adults. Think of a caterpillar to a butterfly. That process is also called metamorphosis. The next group of animals is called the arachnids. You might also like to call them spiders. Arachnids are different than insects. Some of the things you're gonna see here we'll talk about. Spiders and scorpions, here's a scorpion, belong to a group of arthropods called arachnids. Say that word with us, arachnids. Arachnids have eight legs, so not six, but eight. They have two main body sections. So instead of having one, or I'm sorry, instead of having three like an insect, they have two. They have the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Now, the cephalothorax means the head and the thorax connected together. So that's what this part here is in the front. It's their head and thorax together. Arachnids don't have antenna or wings, okay? Now, unlike insects, like I just said, they don't have antenna or wings. Arachnids include tarantulas, garden spiders, and black widow spiders. Ooh, they give me the creeps. Like all arachnids, scorpions have eight legs. So scorpions are the same as these spiders. Eight legs. Unlike spiders, scorpions also have a, a pair of large pinchers. Here's their pinchers and a long tail with a venomous stinger at the end. So arachnids don't have pinchers and a long tail, or spiders, but scorpions do. All scorpions are poisonous, but only some are deadly to humans. So they inject a poison, but not all of them are deadly to humans. So spiders and scorpions are a form of arachnid. And here is a picture of the two body parts, the cephalothorax and the abdomen, and the eight legs of an arachnid. So again, eight jointed legs, two body parts is an arachnid, six legs, three body parts is an insect. All right, the next group of arachnids is the crustaceans group. And these are examples of crustaceans. We have lobsters and we've got crabs. These are crustaceans and shrimp. Crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and barnacles. So barnacles are kind of like those little, they look like clam shells um, that open up or have a mouth opening that sometimes gets stuck to the bottom of boats or rocks. Belong to a group of ar arthropods called crustaceans. Most crustaceans live underwater, but a few live in damp places on land. Okay, so most of them live in water and most of them even live in salt water to be specific, but a few of them don't. Most crustaceans have 10 legs and two pairs of antenna. So 10 legs that means that they would have the prefix deca and they would be called decapods because 10 mean, is deca or deca means 10 and legs would be pods. So crabs like this one shown here, lobsters 
and shrimp have 10 legs and are called decapods. They also have two antenna. Many have claws or pinchers on their front two legs like the crab. The last group of arthropods is called a myropod. And these are those little slimy worms and millipedes. So centipedes and millipedes, centa, century, 100, milla, million, mil, mil, million legs, belong to a group of arthropods called myropods. And that means many legs, many legs. Some myropods have as many as 750 legs. Oh my goodness, can you imagine that? Centipedes are swift predators with poisonous fangs. Centipedes have two legs for each segment of their body. Millipedes, are, however, are slow-moving herbivores with four legs on each body segment. So millipedes have more legs than centipedes. centipedes. Oh my goodness. So this would be another example of arthropods. You are gonna watch a couple of videos about arthropods today and learn and see more examples.